Hello there, Kevin Tharp. Today we are going to talk about uh, data, databases, and uh, a little bit about XML. And uh, you need to understand that this topic is um, immense. Um, people spend entire careers uh, finding out ways of optimizing data or using data or designing databases and and it's a, it's a huge topic so we're only going to be able to just barely wade into this at a level that is is pretty shallow but will give you an understanding of how databases work so that you can hook your website up to a database and and start using uh, the database to um, affect the content in your website and to to manipulate the database with your website. So we need to start at a, at a basic level of, of data. And um, So let's start with what is data. Um, data is just information about something. And that can take uh, all kinds of different things. So let's demonstrate here. What I'm doing is just a, a Bing shirt, uh, search for shoe. And I'm bringing up images. And I'm going to go to the first shoe that I find there. And so what can we say about this shoe? Um, we could say that it is a size, let's just say it's a, a size um, men's 11 and a half US size. So that, that would be the size. The material um, looks like it's leather to me. Uh, the type would be, I don't know, let's say casual. Uh, color is brown. Brand name is, I believe that's a Hush Puppy. Yeah, Hush Puppy. Uh, and then we could do a manufactured location. I don't know where it's manufactured. Let's just say um, Bermuda. So each of those pieces of information about this shoe is a piece of data. And so um, they're just different things that can be uh, said about whatever it is that we are looking at. In this case, it is a shoe. So let's go ahead and lose that. And the way that data is normally laid out, what I've got here is an Excel spreadsheet. And Excel uh, uses tables, as do databases. Um, and in this case, what I've got is this is just a, a document that I use for designing schedules for the semester. And so uh, across the top, I've got categories of types of information uh, or what we would call um, fields of information. And um, so the fields that are available for each of the information would be module, week start date, week end date, topic, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these are things that are consistent um, source uh, types of data about all of the different records that we are going to be dealing with. And in this case, the records would be the, the different weeks of the semester. And so um, each of the uh, things that line up horizontally would be called uh, records or rows. Each of the things that line up um, vertically are fields or columns. And so what you have is any time that you're using a table, a table is a two-dimensional representation of information that consists of records and fields. And that's the same in databases and it's the same thing in spreadsheets. Now I've opened up another spreadsheet to, to give you a look at um, just another way of looking at the, the um, fields and the records. So here we have a telephone list. Uh, again, still looking at a spreadsheet. And what you'll see here is they've got fields, last name, first name, etc., etc., etc. Now, you could simply use name uh, to put their first and last names, but what that does is it doesn't allow you then to separate out the first name from the last name. So if I wanted to to find everybody with the last name of Tharp. If I had for name Kevin Tharp in there, I wouldn't be able to sort this uh, based upon just the last name. So uh, what people do is exactly what is here. They break the data down into uh, sort of the smallest reasonable size 
components uh, so that name it, you'll normally see as last name first name and and they also uh, often include middle initial or middle name in there and that's to break that information down uh, to a level where it, it allows you the flexibility to explore that data in um, in the greatest means possible within reason because you can get carried away with breaking things down too far the process of breaking it down into the smallest is part of a, the normalization process where you break the data down into the smallest bits so if we go back to our shoe um, whereas before I had material <clears throat> that only left me the flexibility for one type of material here uh, but I see that there's um, you know, there's sort of different parts of the shoe. Like if I was wearing a duck boot, this upper part would be uh, leather, the lower part would be rubber, and then the sole would be rubber. So uh, if we wanted to have a normalized um, set of data for the materials of shoes, you'd have to look at the uppers, the uh, lower sections, the soles. You might even want to bring in data about the uh, the lining, uh, whether or not it has steel toes, that kind of thing, um, types of shoelaces. Uh, these are all material uh, components, and so you would need to break those up uh, into uh, those types of materials if that was necessary for whatever use you are doing. So if you've got a website that's describing shoes, you're going to want to give them the ability to tell what the different types of materials are whereas if it were just a, a broader uh, type you may only just leave it as one type of material but what that comes down to is knowing how your data is going to be used so what is a database um, basically a database is a software solution that allows you to create manage uh, provide access to and store data about um, whatever it is that you're trying to store data about. Databases are primarily made up of um, tables like you see in Excel. Um, they are two-dimensional. Tables are two-dimensional and we'll talk about it in a little while how databases unlike spreadsheets you can uh, link the tables in ways that allow them to become three-dimensional. Uh, the other thing that you can do in a database that you can't do uh, in a uh, spreadsheet is that you can associate um, particular re um, tables with other tables. So now let's leave this realm of spreadsheets and um, their tables and, and get further into databases. Um, Databases, and specifically, we'll be working with what's called a relational database. Uh, a relational database is a database that is designed to be representative of something in the real world. Uh, so that if we were doing a database going back to the shoes again uh, about uh, shoes, what we would be doing is we would be putting together a database that represented the kind of information that uh, would be associated with shoes such as manufacturer, shipping, etc, etc, etc. So uh, the database and the tables that make up a database uh, are, are created to be representative of something that is in the real world. And again, that database is made up of a series of tables that contain information uh, with each cell in the table containing unique information uh, about the particular record. An important thing to realize about when you are using a database is that each record within a database, and here there is just a, uh, a customer's database that we'll be looking at a little bit, um, it only has two records in it right now, but however many records were in here each record needs to be unique within that particular table uh, in other words I couldn't duplicate this field or this uh, record exactly and put it down here because then there would be two exact copies of the same 
record. And so when you were trying to manipulate that data, it wouldn't know the difference between the first entry and the second entry. And so something has to be done in order to facilitate that. And while I'm talking about manipulating the data or massaging it, one of the ways that you can um, manipulate data is by running what's called a query. A query is just simply the process of asking the data base a question and getting a response. So you ask it a question about that. For instance, <clears throat> uh, I could say, give me everybody who is has a job title of assistant professor and what it would do is it would go through my data and uh, it would run that query and it would say who is everybody who has the job title of assistant professor and it, what it would do is it would bring me back another table that had the answer to that response so that's what a query is is a query is the the process that we use to ask the database a question and get a response from that database. That new that set of um, responses or the answer to that comes in the form of a new record set or sometimes it's called a new data set but a record set and data set are the same thing they just uh, have the different terms depending upon uh, which software you're using at the time. Now I've touched upon the idea that a table is two-dimensional. It's got an X and a Y axis. So we've got rows and columns, uh, records and fields. And so that's a two-dimensional representation of data. But when you have multiple tables, you can start to link those tables together. For instance, here is a, um, a visual diagram of a database that has uh, four tables. Uh, one is about customers, one is about calls, one is about employees, and then there's another about employees. And that's specifically related to uh, the type of database this is. This is a, a database that is about managing phone calls uh, that have come in or gone out uh, from the organization to its customers. And so the, the central thing here that ties it all together is calls. We've got a database about customers and we've got a database about the employees. In this case, uh, one would be the employee that um, solves a problem or, or the ticket is assigned to. The other is um, who either takes the call or uh, solves a problem. So they're different employees. So there's different tables for the different functions that they're doing. But so we look at our customers and you'll see that um, within our customers, and this is the same table that we were looking at here, uh, there's our customers. Here is a view of our customers uh, and you'll notice that the fields that are available are also represented in here. So we've got the ID and this is the important thing that we need to understand at this point. When we are going to start um, going to a three-dimensional representation of data, what we have to do is we have got to have a way of linking from one table to the next table uh, in a way that is um, um, consistent, verifiable, and uh, isn't going to lead to errors. And so what we do is um, within each record we create uh, what is called a primary key. You'll see here that the ID is the primary key and that's indicated by the little symbol of the key shown right there. That's saying that that is the unique identifier for that particular record or that set of records. Each one is going to have to have an ID and that ID cannot be duplicated. So um, when I entered these records in I did not enter the ID. Rather what I used is a um, just a different form that was set up that will allow me to enter data into that table. Now uh, we're not going to be setting it up in this way. This is just for illustration but you'll notice that when I enter the information in here, it doesn't give it. It doesn't have an ID as visible because that's a required field, and it automatically creates that new 
uh, ID whenever I create a new record. So if I came into here and I started to fill out information, you notice that it automatically gave it an ID and that ID has got to be unique. There cannot be two with the same identifier in that database. Another thing that is important to realize is that um, the rest of these information in these records could be identical, but as long as there is a primary key that makes it different, then that gives it the ability to distinguish one record from the other, and um, that's why we have the primary keys. Um, and the role of that primary key is to ensure that you don't have duplicate records in any of your tables. Now, um, with that primary key, there's also what's called a foreign key, which would be, um, for instance, caller in this case, might use a foreign key that is actually uh, the primary key in here. So when you're using a foreign key, what it is is a field in a table that refers to a primary key in another t table. And so what that what we're talking about there is establishing relationships between these field between these uh, tables. Now the relationships between two tables can take three different forms. You can have one to one, one to many, or many to many. And uh, you can see in these connectors here, what these connectors are is they show that a relationship has been established within the d database between the customer's table with the uh, ID tab and the calls table with the caller um, uh, property. And what that means is that we've got a one to many relationship. So on this side, for every record you have of a customer's, there can be um, none, one, or many different relationships in this calls table. So we've got the option of one to one, one to many, and many to many. And uh, many to many is um, in some days databases is is really complex it can't be directly associated we don't really need to understand that you can read about that in the materials that I provide um, as extra resources but usually the one to many is a relationship that you have most often so if we look at the relationships here what we've got is for each customer for each customer one you can actually have many calls you can have no calls you can have one call or you can have many calls so that relationship ties that in there so if say I was a customer who had uh, made 10 calls to customer support then there would be um, 10 different records in this calls table that were associated with my customer ID number and so that's I'm the one customer. The many means that I could have 10 different um, calls or records of calls that are associated. And then we come to the other side and we see the many to one or one to many relationship here where each employee can have be assigned um, many different calls or in this case each employee that is resolving things uh, can uh, have many tickets that they resolved. So it allows that ability to uh, have the flexibility of there not just being a one-to-one -one relationship between records and different tables. If it were a one-to-one -one relationship, for each row in the first table, there could be either zero or one. There couldn't be more than one record than the second. So in a case of this where a customer may be doing more than one call, there needs to be the one-to-many relationship. Now another important thing to understand about relational databases is that a particular piece of data should only be stored in one location. Let me explain that a little bit more. So 
I am a customer. So when I become the customer, they create this record of me. It's got my last name, my first name, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when I call, they don't want to re-enter that information over here. That's why we have this uh, relationship established. So all that they have to do is point to my ID uh, and then they don't have to enter all that information about me into this second table. Uh, so it is able to say based upon this unique identifier they're able to access all this other information about me so that they're not having to enter it in multiple locations. And let me point to one of the reasons why that's really important. Say I decided to change my last name. I'm getting married and I've decided that I'm going to take uh, the last name of my wife. So what could happen is they could come into my customer table and they could change my last name and then if this relationship didn't exist that was based on my ID, my ID will stay the same. If this relationship didn't exist and they had entered uh, my name in this table for each call, then when my last name is changed they would have to go through and change it on the customer table but they'd also have to go through to every call that I'd ever done and change that record to show my new last name and as you can imagine that could become extremely time-consuming and it would end up um, you know maybe they got some of them changed some of them they didn't so what it becomes is a single point of maintaining information because it is only a specific piece of data is only entered in one location and that is a crucial aspect of understanding the relational database.